<laughs> okay. Um, so I was just mentioned to Judy that I was sent on a wonderful rabbit hole to Shabbos as I was looking for what I was going to talk about my um, Torah. A little loud. Sure. Yeah. Um, so the partial coming up is Behar. And just a quick little note on Behar. Um, I um, connect with a wonderful rabbi in Yerushalayim, uh, uh, Rabbi um, Aram Yaakov Pritzky. And he's been writing and sending out these emails every, last year, every week about the Parsha. And he's got a theme going through the whole thing about how ever since we were sent out of Gan Eden, the whole job is reconnecting with Hashem and getting us back to the state where we can walk with Hashem and Gan Eden the way we did before the Chayt, the way Adam did before the Chayt. And he says that in Sefer Shmuk, we get um, this connection of Hashem coming down to us and then uh, building in the Mishkan. And then Sefer Vayikra is elevating, or at least the beginning part, is elevating ourselves to reach up to Hashem. And so with Achorei Mot and Kedoshim and Emor, the last three weeks, we have all these rules and all these things that we can do in order to make ourselves Kedoshim. So we're, we merit this connection. And he says, when you get to Behar and we get to these laws about Yovel and Shemitah, it's a mistake to think that these are further rules that we need to follow in order to create that connection. By the time we get to Eretz Yisrael, with Hashem amongst us, that's already a huge chunk of the purpose of what's supposed to be going on. It's not the cause, Shemitah and Yovel, it's actually an effect. By being in Eretz Yisrael and letting the land lie fallow every seventh year, um, and for Yovel on the 50th year, we are visibly showing the rest of the world our imuna in Hashem. We're creating a Gilui Hashem in the world through that action. And that's what we're supposed to be doing, is revealing Hashem's presence in the world. So it is, he's saying this is not a cause for further connection to Hashem, even though it will bring us produce and bracha from Hashem, but it's actually the effect. Um, but that's not what I really want to talk to you about. <laughs> um, so I ended up on this wonderful rabbit hole. I opened up this lovely book I have by a, a local fellow, Daniel uh, Vinicor, and it's called um, Sodota Safah Ivri, The Secrets of the Hebrew Language. And he's just got beautiful essays on all sorts of amazing, wonderful things that are hidden within our Torah, Torah and some that are not so hidden. Um, so we have this idea that the nefesh is in the dam, right? The, the soul is in the dam. The dam is also the word for money in Hebrew, damim. Right? So the idea is you're exerting your blood, sweat, and tears, your, your blood and, and nefesh into performing some work. And in exchange for that, you need to be paid back or, or paid. Um, somebody has to lishalem to make you whole. The root is shin, lam, and mem. Like shalom, right? Shalom, complete. So by giving you a tashlum, by giving you your salary, your payment, he's making you whole again, right? And the idea of nefesh and weight and and, and the connection um, is also seen. The word nefesh has a gematria of four hundred and thirty, and so does the word shekel. Oh, Mishkal wow. is weight, right? And um, they break down the body into three main organs. You have the Rosh, the Moach, which is connected to Shemayim, um, the Kaveh, the liver, which is connected to the Aretz, and the Lev is the bridge between the two. All right? um, so Kaveh, which has a gematria of 26, is the one in the middle. It serves as the Gesher, as this bridge. And we have two types of, of uh, well, Osher and Osher. Osher with an olive is the idea of simcha, great joy. And osher with an ayin is riches. So one is talking about riches that you get in the physical world, and the other is the riches that you get in the spiritual world. Um, and we also have the word otsar, which is connected to osher, the shin and the tzadi can be switched out in, in the, um, because they're from the same part of the mouth. The letters are come from the same part. So otsar is a treasure house or a treasury. Right, but if you misuse it, it can be owed sar, or it can bring you trouble. Uh -huh. So having too much money is a fine line that you have to look. It's not a 
a challenge that everybody is blessed with, it looks like. Um, the story I'm willing to try that. <laughs> <laughs> the the, 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 the source for Ocean Ayn Shin Race is the same as Russia because too much money can lead you to, or thinking that you've done this all on your own and you don't give the credit to Hashem where it's worth, or that you now have enough money to take care of all your physical needs and all your desires and anything you, you might want to get for yourself. And so you're not relying on Hashem to provide those anymore. Um, and it's also Seir, which is another name for Asa. So that branch of the human population is very persuaded by money. And we see this, that Asa was coming to meet Yaakov when he was returning from Levan and he wanted to kill him. But Yaakov was able to bribe him, right? He put enough money, enough, he put 550, I believe, animals in front of the total. And his <laughs> desire for revenge and murder, he was able to push it aside because there's this root in Asa that's connected to, to money. Um, we also get in Rashid that story of Yaakov when he has this dream of the Sulam, um, the angels going up and down, and it's got its feet on the ground, and the top of the ladder is up in Shemayim. And we, Yaakov has two names. The first name, Yaakov, has got the word Ekev, which is the heel, the foot, the lowest part. It represents the bottom of the ladder. And Yisrael, the name that he got later on, in fact, we switch the letters around as Li Rosh, and it's referring to the top, to the Shemayim. And the Sulam is a bridge. And where was this? This was Har Moria, the same place that Abraham had sacrificed Yitzchak, um, and later where the temple was to be built. So this is the portal to Hashem here on earth. And all the, so everybody in the world faces Yerushalayim when they pray. If you're in Yerushalayim, you face the Temple Mount. If you're in the Temple Mount, you face where the Kosher Kedoshim would be. All of Israel, when they pray, are like one heart, all facing in the same direction, all having the, the same Kavanah. And this one heart brings Gashmi, it brings um, um, <laughs> materialistic gain to the world through our prayer. Um, another word for rain is matar, not just geshem. Geshem is related to gashem. Matar is um, the masculine form of the word matara, and it sounds very similar to matter in English. What matters? What's important? What's the ikr? What's the matara? And um, when, so there's two things here. First, on the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur, the uh, Kohen Hagadol is in the holiest spot in the year. He's at the inner sanctum of the Kodesh Kedoshim, and he gives off a prayer during Musaf. And what's this prayer that he's asking for at this height of everything, the, the culmination, the closest connection time of the year for Hashem? He's asking for Gesha. He's asking for rain. First, most of the people were agriculturally based at that time, so it was going to give them the produce that they'd be able to sell and create Parnasa for themselves. Um, so there's a big tie between the rain and the, and the Geshem and the Parnasa. Um, but how does Hashem answer? He answers, um, Ana is the word for answer. The Shorish for answer is Ainun. When Hashem um, comes to Noah after the flood, and he tells him about the covenant that he's creating with him, he says, I'm going to bring you an answer in a cloud. Anani be Anan. Anan. The second nun in Anan is not part of the Shorash. The Ayin Nun is the root of the word. So this idea of answer is connected to the idea of cloud. You ask a tefillah for Hashem and he answers with cloud and with rain and with gashmiut. Um, another interesting thing I found, Moach, it corresponds, brain corresponds to Kohen, Lev to Levi, and the Kaved to Yisrael. Lev and Levi, you're just switching the vav and the bet, right? Um, which, which plays it in a couple of ways that we'll get to in just a second. <laughs> um, and a quick note, the idea of when you want to purify yourself, you go to a mikvah, right? Tvila, same shorash is levatel, to, um, uh, I don't know. Thank you, null, self-abnegate, right? So water is, colorless, odorless, tasteless, and formless. It takes on, if you add anything to it with color, it'll take that on. If you put it in a glass, it'll be a glass shape. If you put it in a bottle, it'll be a bottle shape. It has no form. It, it, it abnegates itself to whatever it comes in contact with. 
So the idea of going into a mikveh and submerging yourself in the water is you're completely becoming part of the water and you're submerging and abnegating yourself or annulling yourself before Hashem. And then you can come out pure again. So when you look at the letters of the Aleph Bet and you write them all out in a row, we have Aleph at the beginning, Taf at the end, and Mem in the middle, right? Emet. Um, but depending on how you write out the 27 letter alphabet, Mem is either the second letter. If you write the final letters, like if you go Alphabet Gimel Dalit, Kaf, Kaf, Sofit, Mem, Mem, Sofit, you have the Sofit letters right after the regular letter. And Mem is the middle letter in the alphabet. And if you um, do it so that you write all the letters, the regular letters out first, and then you add the letters for the Sofit, then Nun becomes your last letter of the alphabet. And Mem and Nun are interchangeable in a lot of words. The middle, sorry, the middle, yeah. Mem and Nun are interchangeable in a lot of words. And some of them you might recognize are like Eruvin or Kedushin, um, uh, Girushin, Nizikin, um, uh, Kumsin. So Mem and Nun are connected to each other and can be interchanged in many cases. But Mem and Nun together are Man, and they represent this middle line. Um, of the alphabet and also the middle line of us um, in our bodies, the middle line, again, we have the moach, the heart, and the liver, all three are along the middle line. Um, and there's two breeds that are associated with the body primarily, and one is um, breed mila, um, mm-hmm. which is the reproductive organ, um, but there's also an upper breed with the mouth. And so by avoiding lush and heart and being careful about what you say, by putting your effort into tefillah and by guarding the breed, then all of these things create a tikkun for mamon, for money. And you can improve your parnasa as long as you keep these three in line. So the idea behind this is that if Am Yisrael isn't doing what Hashem wants us to do, he'll give us inui, he'll, he'll uh, afflict us, which is again, ayinun, right? Causing us to pray, we all turn to him with one heart at the same time, Lev Ola, and it opens up this portal for Hashem to send Hashmiut and Parnasa to the world and to us. And so the idea of being Lev Ha'ad, Amrithad, also ties into the word Yerushalayim, but I'm going to have to save that for another Torah Torah. Tor- tor- <laughs> <laughs> One quick last thing, the, um, the seven weeks of Sphira correspond to the seven species. And Hod, um, which is the week of Lagba Omer. Rashbi is Hod the Hod of Lagba Omer. Hod is associated with Rimon. If you rearrange the letters of Rimon, you get Mero. Ah. Ah. Does that sound right? It's just it's buried to be buried there because there's such, there's such a guzzle in Torah. And Meron is a big place for Torah. Meron is Me is Maim of the waters of. Ron is Simcha. So the idea of engaging in Torah and Simcha will bring down these Mayro, these waters of happiness, and, and, and we're all living in the shadow of Mayro. So, everybody, and bring you joy, and, and try and find that moment of joy when you pray, and have Kavana so that everything can play out the way Hashem wants very quickly. Amen. Thank you. Let's talk again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we're continuing with our study, the laws of Shabbos, the Lamitat Malachos. We're on the last one, which is pretty long. Um, anyways, we've been talking about, last week we spoke about um, this idea that, um, um, mm. That a chai nose et atmo, that a living thing carries itself. And diorisa, a person, diorisa, you could ca- actually carry a living thing um, a- as long as it has the ability to be able to walk on its own. De Rabbanan, it was prohibited. Uh, and we also spoke about the fact that, uh, I mean, that's the reason why we don't take a baby to a bris. If, they're, if, if the, uh, so the baby's probably doesn't walk, so, um, so, 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 since, uh, so, you, so, if, if the, the moel has to come to the baby, everybody has to come to the baby, as opposed to the baby going to the location. Okay, so then we left off, we left off with, with this question of what do you do if you have a, a kid, you know, who can walk, 
you know, a five-year-old kid, six-year-old kid, regularly you knows, but has a meltdown. You know, what what uh, what what do you do exactly at that moment? How do you how do you deal with this? What? That never happens. You know, you know what I actually heard this week that at, at age six, that a parent is no longer, according to the Gemara, they're no longer obligated to support the child. So the kid has a meltdown and he's six plus. Hey, you're on your own, kid. <laughs> I think I think they must have made kids different in those days when they had kids now, right? Yeah. Anyways, so um, we're we're going to be talking this week, next week, also. Like th these are situations that are you know you, sometimes you know you have you have a, a the, the normal way of dealing with something, right? You don't carry you know a child in a in a public place, but sometimes you have to. Um, there are exceptional situations. And the Laka has to deal with what to do when you have deviations from, from the norm. And that's why I've said this before. That that's why it's important to have know the distinction between what is a mitzvah diorisa and what is a mitzvah de, what is a, a, a derabanat. Um, because that, that's really where you have, I won't say wiggle room, but that's where you have the opportunity. That's where you can, can sort of repair the situation. So, so for example, so you have this toddler, you have this young child who refuses to walk. So first you spend as much effort, as much time as you possibly can trying to convince them, threaten them, tempt them, whatever you need to do. And if it still doesn't work, so if you're in a Carmelise, okay, if you remember, Carmelise is, is an open area um, that doesn't have a lot of traffic. So like most suburban areas, uh, a village, a country area would be considered a Carmelise. It's a, it's, it was made up by the rabbis. It doesn't didn't exist as a um, it, in, as, as the Orisa. So they created um, for, for much the reason that they did a lot of things that so that people shouldn't be confused and think that you know oh I guess if you can carry there you can carry here. So they they prohibited carrying in a in a Carmelis. But here you have this situation where you have this child. Well, so the, in a Carmelis, so you can actually carry the child. That's so if you're, um, I, I don't, you know, then you have the problem, let's say you're walking through this neighborhood and then suddenly you get to a very busy street, so it's no longer a Carmelis, then that becomes a, a Rishusa Rabin, that becomes a public domain, which where it's prohibited to arise to, to carry. Um, so you have, you have two, two things, actually. You have your, you're, you're talking about carrying in a Carmelis, and you're also talking about, uh, we said, you know, a living thing carries itself. So you have two Durabanans, so that would give you the, the room to be able to, 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 to carry the, the child home. Okay, now what do you do if you're in a Rishus Harabim, in a, in a very a public, you know, well-traveled area? You're in the middle of Manhattan, this happens, or you're, you're on a very, very busy street. <clears throat> so what you cannot do is you can't carry the kid. You cannot pick up the kid and carry them home. That's... Um, of course, we're just want to remind everybody all these instances. We're talking about places where there's no a roof, and it may not apply to many cities in in Israel, but it definitely happens. We we there are people you know leave the country. There are definitely instances where you have to deal with this, so it's important to know this. Okay, so the, the you know so you again you you uh, you you can. Um, you, you know, you, you can uh, you have to try and convince the child if it doesn't go. So these are the things that you must do. So first of all, um, the kid can't be carrying anything, mm. right? When you have this idea of chai no seatzmo, okay, it, 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 the things that the kid is carrying in itself, in his hands, you know, it's not carrying itself. So make him even more upset. Take away his teddy bear, <laughs> take away his, his toy and, and uh, pass it, you know, whatever it is, okay? Um, so the, the thing is that, that people can, you can pass the child from one person to the next. If there are two people, okay, you, 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 carry, you carry this child, walk less than six feet, pass it to the other person, walk less than six feet, pass it to the other person. Now the kid's either going to say, oh, that's fun, or the kid's going to say, this is weird, I don't, I don't want to walk. Um, <laughs> but... Okay, so, so let's look at why this is okay. So we said that um, that that the the definition, the halakhic definition of a of carrying is there has to be a, a kira and han, 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 hanaka, right? There has to be lifting the thing up and there has to be placing it down. And if you're only doing one of those things, right, you're not doing the complete malacha. 
right? Like you're, you may be picking up this child, but you're, you know, giving it to, to someone else who's moving, right? We said that, that Hanafa can only really take place if it's a stationary object. If you put a, you know, you're carrying something and you put it in a puddle, you know, you haven't actually done anything. You haven't, uh, you, you haven't put it down. Okay, so you, so you have um, two people who are doing half the malacha, and they're and it's it's a moving object, and um, Wait, does the person have to be moving? Yeah, it has yeah, to be moving. It has to be moving. Passing, passing. It can No, it has. It's, it, you, I mean, you can, but it's really best if you if they're if they're both moving. Yes. So in the middle of New York City, I would suggest to walk. Isn't that dangerous? No, it's a Just walk. casting a child while you're walking. Well, walk slowly. Yeah. Walk slowly. Yeah. You know, do, do it slowly. Yeah. One of the things that no, I always found it. happened is child's having a meltdown and you're holding your hand and you end up sort of half getting them to walk, half dragging them. Not, not really. Dragging is considered carrying. Dragging is right. considered Sorry, that's why I just wanted to like yeah. the child. Right, right. Yeah, you, you should. What about if it's between two people? Dragging the child between two people. But no, no, no. no. I mean, and then they, they let it go and transfer the hand to the child. Eventually, the child's going to walk. Probably. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That's, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> so that, um, yeah. No, no, we'll, I and mean, we'll talk about garments later. But uh, but uh, you know, the garment is the garment, and the kid is the kid. Wait, so what? Are, but you have to keep passing every six feet back and forth between Less each than other. Less six feet. Yes. Is this yes. A this is in a rishusa rabbi, exactly. Yeah. In a carmelis, it's different. In a Rishus Rabim uh, area that's uh, open, uh, an area that's, that has a lot of traffic, an open area that has a lot of traffic. You can see everything is fucked up. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, 100%. Yeah, that was, I, I was going to experience like, Exactly right. That's exactly right. If, if you have, you know, if you're in a dangerous neighborhood, if suddenly there's a, you know, a, I don't know, a lightning storm, um, if, if, you know, I guess if the kid's like <laughs> flowing blood, um, you know, I don't, if there's a really a serious emergency, no walk, run. No, pick up the kid. Siren. 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 Okay. I guess so. I guess they don't have to. Well, okay. Yeah. That, that's about, that's about right. Something like Spot would be considered a piece. Um, depends where, like, you know, which is, which is, uh, which is kind of like, oh, like there's main thoroughfares. Yeah. Like, I, 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 like, I think like the, like the, uh, um, this circle outside the Saraya would, would definitely be a Rosh Hashanah in Rehov Yerushalayim. I don't know. It's, it's, well, it's not. right. But it, it doesn't matter. It becomes, it's true, but it, it, it like takes the status of it, it has it doesn't its status doesn't change back and forth. It is you know commercial like now like unfortunately I mean you could walk down the street and you don't see anybody because it, the town's a little empty. But um, if you're on Tet Zion in 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 the, in the artist quarter on Shabbos, it's it's not a main thoroughfare. Right. So yeah. that so that might be considered a carmelite. The, the right. That, but but of course we know that that. De Rabbanan, we're still not allowed to carry in a, in a carmelis. Okay, all right, so let's, let me just move along. Okay, so let's say you have, um, you have um, a, uh, you don't have two people, you're only one person. You know, okay, so let's see, you should try and find a non-Jew. Where do you find a non-Jew? Um, okay, but try and find you. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, uh, no. Um, okay, so um, there's only one person, so what should you do? So, to, the malacha of carrying it actually only takes place if you go if you go more than that you go over six feet. Okay, so again, these are not ideal situations. This is what to do because you have this situation. You now you have to find. So so usually when you have this problem, then it's the it's the derabanans that that go that you're that you're allowed to. Uh, but but you, you you do everything to protect not doing the diorisa. Okay, so is there um, a so you a, a number or something that differentiates between Carmelite and, and place for rubbing? 
Actually, there's there's a, a tremendous amount of, of uh, debate of what exactly it means. I mean, there are people who hope, who say that that a true um, uh, Rishus Rabin has to have like six hundred thousand people passing through. So maybe like the Isle of Manhattan, and you know, I I don't know. I don't know. It's it's um, you know, people have have just sort of come to consider it a busy area, and 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 you know, and there's like. Like disagreements on what exactly the definition is. Okay, so um, so just carrying if there's only one person, um, and that is that you carry this child less than six feet. Okay, you walk, you stop, you walk, you stop, you walk. You're getting the idea, I think, right? You stop. Okay. You have to put the kid down each time. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't want to put the kid okay. down. You don't want to. Oh, if he's heavy, if the baby's heavy. It would be very hard. It's a baby or it's, it's not a baby. Not a baby. Not a baby. It's, a baby. it's just like a five year old. Child, like a yeah. yeah. And they might kick. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I think that's it. All right. And again, this day, last point here is dangerous situation. Pick up the kid and run. Okay, I think that's. Um, so the thing is, like, when you live in it, like, I remember when we lived in Chicago, they didn't have an A. And your kids are really, really young, and you really don't think they can make it. You, you just don't even go out yeah, on Shabbos. Right, right. And then when they get to that age, where where they, you know, where you're, where you're like sure it's really going to work out, then you do. But then they have that unexpected meltdown, which like did happen to us once. And like our rabbi said, um, like take two steps and stop. We were in, we weren't in a you know, mm -hmm. um, it's not a busy area or whatever, and we just walked over okay, three steps. Well, oh. We ran to the rabbi's house to ask him. <laughs> no, we were at his, we were at our rabbi's house for the Shabbos meal, and my daughter was really a day. She had she had walked many other times on Shabbos, even had gone to shul, my husband, whatever. So we like we really thought it was fine, but it was late at night, and she was tired, and she did the mm -hmm. whole uh, you know bell town thing. And she would walk, so wow. so we had to do it. Okay. I actually was going to ask if anybody had this experience. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it was enjoyable when we had this. When we stayed in the rabbi's house, yeah. he has all these little kids. And he said, while I was walking with his kids, and then we he said, if this happens, or when we had my grandkids too, they said, this is what you do. It was the same thing. Take, walk less than six feet and pass to the other person. And that's what we did. We just kept passing. Back and forth. It was a meltdown. It was like, oh, great. What the kid take? was my grandmother. She's two. And it was like, did she walk? And suddenly, no. I don't walk. I said, I'm not walking. So what did she do after a while? You had to go all the way home? We actually walked the whole way like that. But with his, one of his youngest ones, I would walk with them a lot. I would stay at their house a lot. And he said, so try to get her to walk. So I would play a game where they had to play tag. You catch me. Uh -huh. and, then, and it was no, no. You're gonna get me from that used to work, having right. them chase me, and then if not, then we would pass with one of the older kids. We would take. Okay, so it happens. That's uh, yeah, all right. Yes. You know what to do. That's okay, right. just a few. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome. Um, we have a number of new people here today, and I want to welcome you. And uh, just so happy that that some of our old people also. Oh, <laughs> <she's> <laughs> Regular old person. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, like, um, what? And we're so happy everybody's here. Exactly. We're so happy everybody's here. Let's let's clap, everybody. Okay. Remember, we started in my living room. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, so um, all right, so breakfast is today is in for the Ilui Neshama of Avraham Dov Ben Ephraim Yaakov. Who's my Abba? Oh. So his, his yard site is tonight. So I just going to say just a, a few words. My father was a was a true believer. You know, he was he used to say, say oh, his name was Avraham, right? He used to say, "Blessed be the God of Avraham," yeah. and he was talking about himself. I mean, he a very personal. Very personal connection, and I, and I think that, that that strong belief, I mean, he raised four children who were Shomer Shabbos, living in Syracuse, New York. There was no day school. There was barely any from kids. It was, uh, we went, all went to public school. It was really quite a wasteland, 
and he and he you know helped held firm and he worked to build a community. He was the president of the shul and the Kajas committee and the this and the that and that. And that. So, anyways, he should uh, should be blessed for everything that he did in his life. Yeah, Pardon me? So you are yes. There you go. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can we dedicate today's learning to that boy in Iran? Yes, go ahead. With, you know, I don't know. I don't know the name. Anybody know the name of it? Yes. Oh, yes. Iran, Anel, and Sonia. Okay. Sonia, 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 and you have to keep dominating and maybe he'll be free. Look, the person who was against him, the person who was who was the the person who was was in charge of his being killed is no longer with us. So maybe that's the that's the issue for him. Yeah, we have to hurry. Sorry. If you're not sure what class to do, there's a schedule on the table. You're welcome to, to take it, to keep it. You could, you know, just read it and, and see what, what classes you want. If you need to consult with me, what you want to take, feel free. Um, okay, at 12.30, Rabbi Rome is continuing his series on Matan Torah and the Infinite You. Okay. Can, can I just read a book? It's called Fans of the Omer. A step-by-step guide to the transformational journey of Spirit of Omer by Rob Benji Elson. It's brand new. I would like to sell it.